Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 11 of KSP Road to Exploration, and today we start with a launch to Minmus. Yes, this is pretty much just my moon rocket at this point, but obviously Min... well, maybe not obviously, but Minmus is in fact easier... well, requires less Delta V to land on. Um, and actually a whole mission to Minmus, even though it's further away, is less uh, requires less Delta V than a moon mission. So I just sent this up. And, uh... I don't actually want to explore Minmus in the same way I'm exploring the moon. I want to maybe do it with a base on the surface and maybe some rovers and things. Um, so it'll be more cost effective and just more interesting. But we need a little science because today I'm sending something to Duna. And I'm sending it whether I have the right antennas or not. So I'm going to really try and get the right antennas so I can actually send data back to Earth and potentially, well, to Kerbin, and potentially have the ability to, um, you know, actually do stuff on Duna. What I was doing there was uh, checking if I had any antennas, which I don't, which means I can't communicate with the stage, which is about to hit the ocean, so that will fail the reusability test, I guess. But yeah, basically, since I'm using remote tech, I can only um, control probes while... Um, Oh, God damn! Oh, well, 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 uh, well, I have a line of sight to uh, communications thing. Oh yeah, also some random thing flew off to infinity. Uh, random probe. So yeah, I will need better antennas to communicate with the ground when I go to Duna. Um, so yeah, it still might be quite patchy, but I might put up some other satellites since it will take its time to get to Duna. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's just uh, burn our way to the moon. No, to the Minmus. To the Minmus. Yes, it's now called the Minmus. It is the one and only. Um, so yeah, it is all pretty standard, but this will be the first time we land on Minmus, and hopefully at some point I will be putting a base down, although <laughs> just while watching back over the footage, there was this mission which at the time I thought was put a, um, uh, put a surface outpost on Minmus, I was like, great, that's how I want to explore Minmus. Watching back, it was the moon, so apparently I'm putting a base on the moon, which... I mean, I don't have the crew, or funds, or technology for, so that'll be fun. Uh, I might have to bail on that mission. I'm not sure. I'm probably, I'm in the process of thinking about upgrading my, um, uh, career, like the, um, what do you call it, the place where you buy the contract, get the contracts, mission control? Let's call it mission control, because right now I can only have seven missions. Oh yeah, also, I accidentally opened Kerbal Inventory System, which allows Kerbals to carry small items, um, while outside, and it had takeoff helmet, and I know I shouldn't have, but uh, I was really curious, and I tried to take Jeb's helmet off, but apparently you can't do that um, in a vacuum, so he didn't die. It's just whenever there's a take helmet off option, I have to click it just to see if they've modelled his head. Not exploding, because that's not what happens, but, you know, doing something horrific. Anyway, so we've just got another quick plane change. I think I had the plane change, and this is more of a fine-tune, so I actually get close to Minmus. Um, it is obviously more Delta V efficient to do these kind of burns far away, but Minmus is so small that it's not that important. And this has so much Delta V. I mean, it's a moon lander going to Minmus. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm going for a polar encounter. Either that or uh, Minmus was being screwy. Yeah, I think Minmus was being screwy, so I just decided to do the final change when I actually got to Minmus. Um, sometimes it's just really hard to tweak stuff from far away. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Maybe my ineptitude, probably. Um, or whatever. Anyway, so we are heading down now, and the second stage has actually taken us all the way to... Minmus, as it usually takes us to the moon, I was uh, rather impressed that it achieved this feat. And it is a bit dark now, but I will be landing in the light. I think I'm going to go for landing on the flats, because um, that's the, I mean, that's the, those are the really easy places to land, and that's where I like to start um, landing. Uh, there's a lot of flats, and sometimes it's hard to tell if you're landing on the great flats, or the lesser flats, or the greater flats, or the flats. I don't know, there's a lot of flats on Minmus, and... Uh, a lot of debate over what they are. Um, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I'm not much of a. Uh, I want to say geologist. See, I don't even know what field I'd have to study to know what they are. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people say they're salt. Um, no, a lot of people. Do people say they're ice, and then Scott Manley says they're salt, and then I don't know. It's blue. I maintain it's mints. Um, not mints like mince pie. Not that you put mince meat in mince pies. Yeah, not like mince meat. Um, also another misconception, British people don't put mincemeat in their pies usually, it's this weird fruit crap. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like mints, like rolos, polos, 
I'm always getting all these uh, freaking candies confused. Yeah, like freaking just loads of blue mints, like blue soft mints. Yeah, that's what Mimbus is. That's my theory. I think it's the best. Anyway, the we're gonna land. I left it all to four times time. Sorry, because since I had so much fuel, I kind of did this super slow landing, which looks much faster because four times time accelerate. Oh, and that that really nice deploy of the legs time looked really good at four times time accelerate. It was really slow in my view, because uh, I really like slow landings. Anyway, so we are on one times time accelerate for a little bit of science gathering. We've uh, got a world first, I'm sure, for landing on Minmus. Um, and quite nicely, we're near two biomes. We're near the slopes and actually the highlands, but I'm probably not going to go there because I don't need that much science and I want things to do next time I come. Um, so yeah, just grab some reports. I can get a surface sample. I think I was saying EVA reports in place of surface sample last time. But yeah, I unlocked the ability to take surface samples at some point, so yay. Anyway, obviously overusing my jetpack, because if I had a working jetpack, I would never not use it. I'm just going to take a sip of water, actually. Ah, my mouth is dry. I blame London water. London water is like hard water. There's lime in it. Not nice lime like chemical. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I have sped this up because you don't want to watch me slowly type. I can type code quite fast, but I can't type English quite fast because, uh, well, it looks pretty fast from here uh, <laughs> because I've sped it up. Anyway, so yeah, let's do that and I'm going to deposit my science in, oh yeah, we've got like, we were paid to put the flag down, that's what paid for the mission, and a bunch of world firsts, so we did pretty well off this mission actually. So I'm going to store my experiments, and uh, I'm going to fly over to the slopes. Look pretty close, right? Yeah, they're actually like two and a half kilometers away. I uh, was a little surprised by that, I thought it was more like a kilometer, but I guess in a desert sort of flat plane, it's hard to tell what stuff's doing. Anyway, so let's just uh, land ourselves down here. The nav ball really helps for landing kerbals. I used to just slam kerbals into the ground like 100% of the time, but now I don't have to. Yeah, but at some point it would be nice to just have like uh, maybe a base here with a rover, uh, various exploration vehicles. Uh, I think that would be nice. On the, f I like, I love how the flats look. I really do like how Minmus looks. There's lots of exploration, and then. Um, Someone will get left on the surface, and we can have the Minmusen, like the Martian, but uh, and then it'll be fine because you can get home with an RCS pack on uh, <laughs> on Minmus. Anyway, let's uh, fail at getting back into our pod. I had a bunch of trouble with this. I was like, "Why is this working? I'm so, why you just grab the thing?" And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get there. Let's get the hell out of here before the Kraken comes. Um, not that he would. I, I was thinking of something more sinister, but the th first thing that came to mind was uh, Kraken, so yay, KSP lore. Anyway, let's head on back. I still have some temperature scans I kind of need to do around Minmus, which I'll probably just send a probe to do, because it, it's probe work, really. Um, but anyway, I just need to grab all of this. I always grab that data in space, just because it's much easier to get it in space, because you can, um, because you can just float around your uh, spacecraft. Uh, well, I guess... I guess you are pretty much in space when you're on Minmus, so I mean, I guess what I'm saying is it's easier to get data out of a spacecraft while you're falling very fast around a planet. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's head on to to home where we will be regaling people in in uh, in stories of the mintiness of Minmus and okay, well, Jeb is obviously the first person to go to Minmus. He was the first on the moon as well, as I explained to you. Set fire to Valentina's car so she couldn't get into work, um, and then you know hid Mick Gunn's rocket keys, um, uh, just like locked Bill in the locker. He's very malicious about these things, so people just kind of sort of decided we should probably just let Jeb go to Minmus first. Otherwise, it's going to cost a lot of money and just revenge, which is yeah, yeah, not great. Anyway, so let's just slam ourselves into the atmosphere very hard and. Uh, does look so beautiful with Scatterer. I know there's a lot of flaking around the outside, but just look quite centrally and it does look really nice. I can't wait to go to Duna and Eve and Jewel and Lathe and I think that's all of the atmospheric planets, depressingly. Um, but anyway, just slide through the atmosphere. I do actually have a game crash, like a hard crash, like right before I land. So there's a bit of a nicely edited, super subtle thing there where. <laughs> Yeah, I, I often throw down quick saves because crashing and it happened there. I've only had like two crashes in this entire series though. Anyway, we're back. We grabbed our science. We have almost 500 science. We're going to unlock these electronics that allow us to have better solar panels and batteries and most importantly, get us the road to these bigger uh, antennas. I just unlocked a bunch of really big antennas. 
um, the longer range omnidirectional one and the dish with a 60 gigameter range which I believe is at least um, a twice the distance from uh, Duna to the Sun so we should always be in range of, um, of, 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 of our spacecraft uh, but obviously a lot of things could go wrong I could encounter behind the Sun I don't think that's gonna happen just cuz maths oh yeah here's that bit where I'm like oh build a new outpost on uh, on Minmus and it was the moon, so we gotta do that apparently. Anyway, let's go to Duna. I'm not actually gonna go to Duna this episode, we're just gonna head off to Duna this episode because that's how I do things. So anyone who's relatively new to my channel is like, oh. But yes, this is a probe I have put together. Quite a big rocket. I wanted something smaller, but I'm having to carry like a one ton antenna with me. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that kind of sucks, but uh, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, there's gonna be no reusability testing in this because I do not want anything to go wrong with my beautiful rocket. I keep the uh, second stage attached for, or the first stage attached for a while, just because so, it'll keep me stable with its wings for a while, and then get a beautiful shot of me detaching that rocket. And uh, yeah, oh, that could be the thumbnail. Good. It wasn't even intended to be a thumbnail. I just want to see what that would look like. Anyway, this is the giant antenna. That's the reason we just went to Minmus. Jeb thinks it's for glory. We think it's for antennas. We can go to Duna. We can do... We choose to go to Duna not because it is easy, but because it's relatively easy. And various buzzwords like that. Anyway, let's extend our articulating solar panels that we unlocked. And radiators, because I thought I'd send some radiators with it. But yeah. Um, and then here we are. I've uh, skipped ahead to where I have planned my maneuver. Really lucky that I actually have... Um, uh, satellite coverage in this because you can see the two Hawkeye satellites have drifted very close together which means they're very less than useful right now so I will be needing to put up a new satellite network and an actually good one. The problem is that they were put up before I could actually find out how um, long an orbit was so they were done entirely on altitude not on actual orbital period so they have slowly diverged um, which is a shame but I'll uh, put up some new ones. Those have been yeah, those have been tidying me over for a very long time, which is uh, good of them, but not we, we need something better now. Anyway, so this is all at four times sound right? It's a relatively long burn-ish. Um, oh no, it wasn't, especially at four times sound accelerate, because I do have a very powerful engine on this. That's the other thing about this rocket, is it does have a lot of fuel. There is also some monopropellant and a monopropellant engine on the uh, probe itself. And yeah, now I'm just seeing uh, pretty much laying down... Oh, I don't think I actually... Uh, I think, do, do I save this maneuver? I, th I hope I do, because I need it, and I don't think I set up an alarm, but I will have to do that, sorry, it's just a bit of station keeping. Station keeping? Just keeping, keeping. Anyway, I'm putting the antenna at, um, at Earth now, so that, uh, uh Kerbin. God, why do I keep saying Earth? Uh, but anyway, yeah, my maneuver is to kick myself off Eve, oh, not off Eve, off, <laughs> off Ike, which is the moon of Duna, and, uh, use that to maybe slow myself down, but probably not. It's just there circumstantially. But I also have a mission to explore Ike, so I can get bits of that done on the way past, if I have connection, which I might not. So, <laughs> that'll be hard. Anyway, you may remember, I think maybe last episode, we uh, started construction of a station by putting up a core. Uh, yeah, we're attempting a little more of that today. This is annoying. Yeah, the main thing about this freaking station is it needs... 2,000 units of liquid fuel in it. Now, I was just going to put up some jet fuel tanks so that I could complete it, but I want it to be actually useful. So I've um, basically assembled myself a bunch of uh, fuel tanks that I'm going to dock to it, and I've got to put two of these modules up with my uh, big rocket, basically. This is effectively my heavy lifter right now. It lifts about 15 tons, which is pretty good for me, and it is working on being reusable. We will be attempting that today, so we've got to set up all these dishes. But yeah, you can see it's kind of... Um, three tanks all set up. I have drained a little bit of fuel out of them. These are as light as they can possibly be because um, I tried putting them all, well I didn't try putting them, I toyed with the idea of putting all of them up at the same time but it didn't work particularly well because um, uh, because I just don't have the technology to lift that stuff right now. Anyway, so yeah, let's try and land this uh, stage um, because that is my main challenge right now. I did slow down a bit. I have communication with Plan Satellite 1 um, or the station if I want. Now there's a lot of time for the payload to reach its destination because it's going to a much higher orbit than usual, so that's all good. And hopefully I will be able to pull the chutes in time, but it looks like I'm coming down quite fast because the station core 
was much lighter, so this stage was coming down much flatter last time. But I do pull the chutes just in time to slam into the ocean too hard. But I do recover my parachutes, so that's a bit of a win. Yeah, I do need to refine that. I think it just needs more fuel, really, to uh, really slow down that stage properly. But anyway, let's push this on into orbit. Um, I probably could have just left quite a lot of fuel in, quite a lot of additional fuel in the first stage because this second stage has a lot of fuel left. Um, rather than putting additional tanks inside the uh, first stage, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave all of this in just so you can kind of see how I uh, maneuver into the station. Now you may be wondering why I didn't launch at a better time. I really needed Plan Satellite 1 to be above me so that I had communication for the first stage, um, because the first stage kind of really needs, uh, needs a communication satellite to uh, kind of communicate so it can control itself on landing. So I basically just realize that I'll just figure out where where, where the station is, uh, how to get to the station when I'm in orbit, which is relatively easy. You pretty much just slow yourself down or speed yourself up relative to your target and do a bunch of orbits. Um, this is a probe, so it has pretty sporadic uh, communications right now. It used to be the... Um, it used to be that I'd have communications pretty much anywhere around the planet except a small blind side, but now I only ha really have communications about half of the half of my orbit, which is kind of a bit terrible. So yeah, again, need a new uh, satellite network. Anyway, so I'm just planning my maneuver to pull myself in close to the station. Um, bunch of just slowing down and slight inclination changes, really. Um, so yeah, let's just perform this and then move in. This does have a bunch of RCS on it. Um, it also has the articulating solar panels I unlocked, which are really nice. It means I don't have to point my spacecraft at anything all the time. So yeah, I'm going to do most of the slowdown burn with this engine and then maneuver in with my uh, rockets. Uh, with my uh, uh, rockets? RCS control, um, which is on the fuel tanks. <laughs> yeah, this is actually going to be my first docking of this series, which will be uh, rather interesting, I think. Um, well, I mean, I've done so many dockings in the past that it hopefully won't be, but, you know, I, I obviously didn't use like a uh, Apollo style moon thing because you just don't need it. Anyway, I ditched that stage so it'll fly away from the station and probably re encounter at very high speeds, causing a gravity type situation, which will be a very interesting episode. Now, hopefully, it won't do that. And then I slowed down in pretty good time. I thought I'd fly a little bit further past it, but it actually worked quite well. I mean, no, I totally planned that with maths and things. But yeah, um, this is all just obviously been sped up because it was a long. I, Basically, it's a fight between do you want to see it at a real speed or do you want to see everything I do? And I think that's more interesting to see like the whole docking procedure. Oh, and you can see the runway down there, which isn't affected by the scatterer mod. Anyway, this is slowed down for the actual docking. And interestingly, I've already overrun loads on the cost of building this station compared to how much I actually got paid. Um, but I do get a bunch of world firsts for docking in space, starting construction of a station. Yeah, all lots of good stuff. Anyway, so I, <laughs> yeah, I decouple this probe and I'm like, I'll fly it away. Then I realize that the thrusters aren't on the probe. So I basically just use it to bat myself away um, by turning it and uh, using my solar panel to push, push off from the station. There we go. Anyway, yeah, this is pretty much the end of the episode. Uh, we're just going to uh, go back to the station and see those things we unlocked and uh, hopefully re rebuild us in the next episode, arrive to Duna relatively soon. I will be speeding through a little bit so you don't have to wait like 20 episodes for a probe to get there. But yeah, I mean, there's a little extra money, almost paid for it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Care Speed with Tape. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.